All right, we're back. We're going to talk about Selye's general adaptation syndrome. So what you see on the top is in the aftermath of an earthquake, people are being, um, you know, the, the rescuers are evacuating survivors and, and coping with the stressor. And then in the bottom, what you see is after it's sort of over with and we've gotten all the survivors out that we can, um, we're sort of kind of re trying to recoup in the bottom. So um, if we look at Selye's model, the first, the phase one is when the... Um, stressor occurs and you are trying to mobilize your resources. So like I said on the last segment, you notice that dip that occurs. Um, if you've ever had a really sort of shocking kind of stressor happen, um, my best example of exactly this happening to me was when um, we were walking back from um, picking my my kindergartner up from school and we had our two-year-old, right? And so we're all walking back and it's, um, me, my husband, and the five-year-old and the two-year-old. And uh, the two-year-old all of a sudden just sort of beeline between two cars and was going for the street, right? And I was closest to him. I'd been holding his hand and he just like let go of me and, and darted between the two cars. So I'm responsible for pulling him back. And I literally, I'm not joking, leaned backwards before I could start moving forward. I, it was like a cartoon. I, I, my brain is like, go, 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 right? And uh, my body was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> like literally leaned back. Um, I, I attribute that to that dip right there where my brain was telling me to go, but my body was like, freeze, you know, don't run out in the street either. Luckily, during that moment, I was able to scream my son's name in a really scary voice that he'd never heard before. And it actually made him turn around. Um, so he didn't go between the cars while I was trying to marshal my defenses. Um, the next phase is where you enter resistance. And so if you imagine in, from our last set of slides, we were talking about a bear being the, the you know, the, the stressor. So in the case of a bear being on your hiking path, your choices are to, to fight with it or flee. I'm going to choose flee. Um, so you start running. And of course, bears run really fast. So you have to try and like, you know, figure out a way to make it harder for the bear to catch you even though they can run faster than you so you're zigzagging or something I don't know trying not to trip over rocks um, all this panic right and your body can probably manage that for up to about 20 minutes of resistance you know I don't th I, I can guarantee you I can't run for 20 minutes like he's gonna eat me um, but probably she right because she probably has her cubs with her and that's why she's mad at me so um, but the fact is the bear has more endurance, I can guarantee you, than I do. And I don't think I have the 20 minutes to resist a, a true flight. Um, but so 20 minutes is sort of like an outside um, number based on like different kinds of responses that you might have, not physically, like literally fleeing maybe. And maybe if you're fighting, the other person's also tired or the other bear's going to get tired sometimes too and you get breaks. I don't know. Anyway, it's about 20 minutes. And then your body starts to reach exhaustion. You just, you can't anymore. You can't cope with that stressor anymore. This is the moment, if you're dealing with daily, daily hassles and then life changes, when your body starts to enter exhaustion is when um, sadness is likely to emerge as an emotion. It might, you might characterize it as hopelessness or other names, but if it, if you think about it, it might be a feeling of sadness that I couldn't cope or that I'm, I'm all alone or no one's helping me or these kinds of thoughts. Um, so that's phase three is where the sadness might enter, enter the picture. Um, so let's use other kinds of stressors, right? So here we have a significant life change. A lot of moms experience sadness after the birth of a baby. And, you know, especially moms who really wanted the baby and they're very happy that it's there and everything is like, this is what I wanted. Why am I feeling so sad? Well, it's because you're exhausted because this is a stressor. You're not getting enough sleep. You know, you don't, especially for a first time parent um, or a, a parent of a child with um, colic that cries a lot. Um, this is going to be a stressful experience. And, um, the form that the exhaustion might take, especially in the first few weeks after giving birth, might be a feeling of sadness. And it's a sadness for 
your lost freedom from the pre like I used to get to sleep like I, I used to get to sleep until I was like not tired anymore but I don't ever I haven't had that feeling in six weeks um it could be you know um it could be that you're sad about not fulfilling what you thought your role as mom would be like it, you know these Instagram moms oh my gosh Instagram needs to be murdered I have to say if you love Instagram I apologize but I'm not even, you know, a young mom, I shouldn't be getting this feed. <laughs> I think I'm getting it because um, I forward a lot of parenting things to my, my daughter, who is a young mom. Um, but man, if I was a young mom and seeing all these other moms seeming to have it all together, I'd be like, whoa. Luckily, there's, a, it seems almost counterbalanced, the same number of moms showing videos where they've, you know, don't have it all together, which I, I think would be boosting. But feeling like, you're not achieving the image that you thought you were going to have, or you're not having the feelings about your newborn that you thought you were going to have, or any of these things could engender in that exhaustion phase, feelings of sadness. Um, what about daily hassles, not meeting the deadlines at work, not getting that, that raise or that promotion that you thought you were in line for, um, you know, feeling like you're stuck in this job because you've been putting out applications someplace else, but you're not getting any answers or like this, this is that kind of, um, you know, exhaustion that you get just from day after day after day, these little bitty things that are accumulating into this overall, I'm exhausted feeling that can engender sadness um, from that kind of daily hassle. So it, um, it's mainly daily hassles and significant life changes that we're going to be talking about as potentially once you get to the exhaustion phase, it may manifest in sadness. All right, so some studies on the mind-body um, interaction. We call that psychoneuroimmunology. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so psycho, hopefully you know what that already means. But in this case, what we're referring to is the emotional component, right? The psycho would be the emotional component that we're studying. Um, the neuro is going to be, you know, the brain part of it. So we're going to be looking at how emotions affect your brain and the immune part of it is going to be um, the immune system, right? So how emotions affect your brain, which then it controls your the hormones and things that can have an impact on um, your immune system. And then ology stands for you know the study of this. And so in psychoneuroimmunology, um, we are interested in this holistic mind-body interaction and how these all interact with each other. All right, so there are some benefits, some benefits of stress, and there are some harms that can come from stress. So before I get into too many other like more elaborate things, um, I wanted to introduce this. Um, the key factor that we're going to be talking about is um, really having to do with whether there's going to be a chance for recovering and healing when you um, are dealing with stressors. So brief stress can be beneficial um, if you have brief stressors where, for example exercise is a brief stress or a brief stress where you have to work really hard to achieve a, an end goal, right? And maybe you weren't sleeping well during that part or you, you know, um, weren't eating well during that part, but it was, it was a confined amount of time. That kind of stressor can actually boost your immune system. It can motivate you to action. It can focus your priorities. It can make you feel engaged, energized, and satisfied. Um, you know, it can provide just the very kind of challenges that you need that'll help you to grow and, and expand your knowledge and, and your self-esteem will improve as a result of, you know, successful completion. And so there are benefits to stress, but the duration seems to be the important thing and how much opportunity there is for recovery and healing between stressors, right? Um, if you're facing extreme stress, you know, like you're the guy standing on the roof of your house while the wildfire is coming, that would be an extreme stress. Prolonged stress, that could include the daily hassles and that could include the significant life changes. Those are the kinds of things that are going to cause problems for us. Um, so mental and physical coping systems can become overwhelmed and they may ultimately feel defeated rather than strengthened. And this is going to have an impact on immune function and other health factors because, you know, you're going to have too many insults onto that system. And so immune functioning can go down. Um, so really it's not, it's hard for me to say, oh, a brief stressor is an hour or less. And, you know, a prolonged one would be more than an hour. No, that's not what I'm talking about. The key factor is whether there's a chance for recovering and healing between stressors. 
So, there, from psychoneuroimmunology, there is evidence for sadness being associated with illness. Um, there was a study of Swedish men, and they found that men who scored higher on a sadness scale reported more lower urinary tract issues like incontinence or being unable to fully empty their bladder, things like that. Um, so there's sort of this connection between this emotion and um, you know, functioning of the urinary tract system. Sadness predicts lower health-related well-being in college students with learning disabilities. Um, they, the article talks about feeling isolated and not supported and, you know, not feeling included in these factors. And that contributes to an overall feeling of sadness. And then that can ultimately contributes to um, health, uh, lower health-related well-being. Now, they didn't measure actual illness in this study. They had people fill out a, a survey uh, that actually measures health-related well-being. And so um, the scores were lower for college students with learning disability than um, who were sad than those who weren't sad. In South African adolescents, sadness was associated with being bullied, assaulted, binge drinking, and suicidal ideation. Um, now, the problem with this particular study, and hopefully you guys are aware of issues with correlational studies, is that this was correlational. And so um, they were looking at students who reported that they, you know, scored in the, in the sadness category on a um, self-report scale and then later followed up to find out if they had been bullied, assaulted, binge drank, you know, had any suicidal ideation and so on since the measurement. The problem is that they might have been having those outcomes prior to the measurements and so it's hard to know whether being bullied leads to sadness and for further bullying, right? or being assaulted leads to sadness, and then maybe being bullied, you know, these kinds of things. So it's kind of hard to say that sadness causes these outcomes, um, but we can say that they are linked. Um, and then among Co South Korean high school students, sadness predicted body image distortions and suicidal ideation. So those students who felt the most sad were the ones who were the least happy with their bodies, um, overestimated their own weight, um, things like that, and also reported suicidal ideation. So these are clearly, um, you know, big effects that can come from sadness. And this is sadness. This is not depression. This is a person who's feeling sad in these studies. All right. So stress effects and health. All right. So there are four types of cells that go on to these little search and destroy missions on behalf of the immune system. Just in case you're curious, these are the four that are um, really important for helping to um, eliminate viruses, even cancer cells, bacteria, things like that. These, these um, types of, of immune cells are in charge of trying to eliminate any of these attackers. Um, the immune system is affected by age. Like, you know, as we age, um, we have fewer response as we age into old age. I'm not talking about like a middle-aged person. I'm talking about like into old age, we have fewer... Um, you know, we, we have fewer forces to marshal in response to like a brand new type of attacker. And that's one of the things that um, made, for example, COVID harder on older people than younger people because older people's immune systems weren't as flexible. And they also had m more um, comorbidities and other factors that made them at higher risk. But um, it's also one of the reasons why cancer is more common among older people because their bodies have just sort of not got the immune system response to be able to just fight off those cancer cells anymore. Um, nutrition, you know, if you're not eating properly. Genetics plays a role. Some people's genes make them, you know, more effective in their immune system than other people's genes allow them to be. Body temperature. Um, and then, of course, stress, the thing we want to focus on as um, and, and using sadness as a type of stressor is what I want to talk about. Some of the incorrect responses that our immune system can have, one is to react too strongly, right? You, some of you may have um, autoimmune disorders where you have self-attacking diseases. Yeah, there are certain kinds of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis is like that. Um, allergic reactions are like that. Um, eczema, other, you know, um, Crohn's disease. These are all examples of when our immune system is too strong. Underreacting, of course, is what we typically think about as far as problematic 
but I think a lot of us are starting to recognize the problem with having too strong of an immune system if it's going to attack ourselves. Um, but bacterial infections are more likely when you have an underreacting immune system. Um, you know, if you have herpes, either the type that comes out on your mouth or the type that comes out on the genitals, either one, they, um, or um, chickenpox is another example of a herpes virus that goes dormant. When you're under stress, um, your underreacting immune system can allow that herpes to come back out. And then, of course, cancer cells can multiply when you have an underreactive uh, immune system. So stress hormones like cortisol suppress the immune system. In animal studies, um, they found that um, the stress of adjustment in monkeys caused weakened immune systems. So putting them into a new environment, having to meet new monkeys, things like that, um, weakened their immune system and made them more vulnerable to illness. Um, in human studies, um, they found that, um, you know, surgical wound healing is slower. Um, you're, you're more likely to develop a cold when you're under stress. Um, if you are very stressed out when you get a vaccination, the vaccination may actually be less effective than if you're less stressed, which is kind of an interesting to think thing to think about again in the in the era of COVID. Like, did that have any impact on the effectiveness of of vaccines that people were given? And a lot of people given it under duress, right? Um, it's important to remember that stress itself is not what makes us sick. It's not you know we can we can face a lot of stressful things in our lives and not end up with immune with um, physical problems. It's the immune system that allows us to become um, sick. So it's it's that stress sort of triggers this immune dampening and that's where you get um, the health related problems. All right, let's finally, after setting all that up, we'll come back in the next segment. We'll talk about sadness and some specific outcomes. So I'll see you in the next video.